So Logic just released a massive update, Logic Pro 11, that adds a ton of features. That includes stem splitting, additional session layers, and a new Chroma Glow plugin. So if you use a sampler like the SP404, these features are pretty awesome. And today we're gonna go over how to use the new stem split feature, which separates a track into four audio tracks into your workflow for sample flips, but also as a mixing tool. So all that sounds great, right? But there is a catch. Timestamps are in the description. Let's get into it. Okay, so we're in Logic and I pulled up a song of mine called Farther and this is one of the few songs I've done vocals on and I think it's a really good metric or litmus to test stem splitting on because it has vocals but there's also a lot going on in the production and in the mid-range especially. So it's interesting to see how a stem splitter splits all of these sounds because it's easy for some sounds to kind of sneak in other splits where it's not supposed to. So to stem split in Logic, all you have to do is have the song in Logic right click it and then hit stem splitter. And then you can choose if there's only a certain sound you want or a couple of sounds. Now it only does the four. All stem splitters right now seem to really just do these four. It's a bit of a bummer because I'd really like to get more nuance in the melody and synths and things like that. But I mean, it's magic just the fact that we can separate these to this extent. So I'm gonna choose all of them and I'm gonna hit split and it takes a second, but then it puts them all together into this folder. So if you close it, here's the stem split. But if I hit this, it expands to show all of them. I don't know, I kind of like that, that structure of it and it already set the colors. I already split it in Koala, which you can see here. And then a patron actually split these stems in the MPC stem split. So I think first, let's just actually compare these stem splitters and see how Logic stacks up to Koala and MPC. I set Koala and MPC to a different color so we can see the difference. Let's find a specific section that will compare all three of these. I just want to quickly compare the three to see how Logic stacks up to these. So I want a part where everything's kind of going. Let's say right here. Okay, so now check this out. If we just solo, here's the vocals. So I hear a couple little artifacts once in a while, but that's pretty solid. Let's hear it again. Here's the drums. It's picking up a little bit of the guitar. I'm not hearing any synth or bass. Let's check out the bass. Here's the other, which is pretty much everything else. That pumping is in the song because it's um, side chain to the kick. That's actually pretty solid. Now let's check out Koala. I found Koala to be one of the most artifacting of any stem splitter. So let's hear the vocals first. So there's a lot going on in there, a lot of artifacting of other parts coming through and it almost sounds like a comb filter or something going through those vocals every once in a while. And you can even see in the waveform, let me zoom in here, look at this right here on the waveform gets all tiny, which it still gets small here, but you can see it like really changing compared to this one, much more consistent. That's that weird filtering I'm talking about. Here it just like kind of switches and gets all tinny. All right, let's hear the drums. So it's picking up a ton, a ton of artifacting. I'm not trashing Koala. I think it's awesome to have stem splitting built into your phone, but it is a bit artifacty. So Logic definitely wins compared to Koala. Let's try MPC. Let's check out the vocals. So this one's pretty clean, but it's still having some of those issues Koala has in this little middle section. You can hear the volume kind of change and there's a bit of distortion or something right here. Very weird. And if we go back to Logic, I don't think it had that. Yeah, the, the Logic one is staying consistent in picking up all of the harmonies. There's a lot of harmonies in that part. And it seems like those harmonies are throwing off Koala and MPC stem split to have some, to try and throw it in synth or something. So the volume's dipping. Now let's check MPC drums. Typically I find the drums solid.
That's pretty good. Uh, let's listen for comparison to Logics again. So I think Logix picks up a little bit more of that guitar transient. I still think it's pretty impressive what Logic is doing there, though I will give drums to MPC. So I think Logic is pretty solid in its stem splitting. We get a little bit of artifacting, but it seems to be pretty good at separating or differentiating the sounds into their specific parts. So I'm pretty impressed with how it came out. Let me know in the comments your take on it. How do you think the stem splitting is in comparison to the other ones that we've used? I mean, if I were to give a tier list, I think I would put Koala at the bottom. MP and then logic out of these three but there's a lot of others this isn't a comprehensive comparison but that's where we got but let me know in the comments which one you think sounded best all right so now that we know how logic stacks up in comparison to other stem splitting apps let's talk about a couple of ways you can make the most out of it or utilize it in your productions whether you are in the DAW with a DAWless setup or some sort of hybrid in between so the first method is sample flipping and using it to get specific sounds or isolated sounds. So if you hear a part in a track that you like, but don't want everything else around it, like let's say you want the drums, but you don't want the guitar that's on top of it, you can use stem splitting to isolate that sound. So we've got farther still. So let's make use of that. Let's say we want some of these vocals. This and we're just gonna sample it in. This this me. We'll go to chop, we'll do auto mark, let's do transients, and let's do soft. <laughs> it only took one with that. Let's go hard and see what happens. And I have an idea, maybe we can do something like that Boards of Canada type of sound. Let's go assign to pad, uh, we'll just put it there. Here we go. Okay, so now we've got... That's a cool idea. Let's put that in. I need some drums or something here. Let's go to 112. I'm a big fan of 112 for four on the floor type of stuff. All right, let's just throw in something and see what happens. So we have that quantize on. So it actually changed it anyways, but that's perfect. Let's try that. So now let's get a bass line from that song or even a pad maybe. Let's get that part in. Okay, let's hear how that sounds. Could also drop the pitch a little bit maybe let's let's try that let's go to maybe down two and let's go to that here and if we hold remain we can just drop them all at once now let's see what that sounds like oh that's awesome let's just get those drums a little bit louder Okay, that was not what I was expecting, but this came out awesome. So now let's maybe add a, a bass on top. I mean, we could take the bass from the idea we had, or we could use it in sound generator. I'm kind of thinking maybe sound generator. Let's get that bass and let's put it here. And then let's turn this on. We're gonna do some sound design real quick. Yeah, let's get that. We're gonna resample that. Okay. And that got hit with that extra hit of what I have on bus three and four, which is cassette sim and compressor. Super simple settings. Just that for compressor and that for uh, cassette sim. That's a little thicker and more low ending sound. Let's try that one. I want to double check really quickly. I think while that's triggered, yep, yeah, there's a little silence at the start. That's what I wanted to verify. 
All right, that's perfect. And that's just one pattern. So I'm quickly going to just copy the pattern and do different muted parts or remove parts to make a song basically. And if you want to get all of the sounds that we're making today, head to the channel memberships. It's a great way to help support the channel. The Solar Sailor tier gets all of the samples that we make in every video. And at any tier you get exclusive content, samples from live streams and a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay, so now that we made a jam using the stem separation, we can talk about one of the other ways to use stem separation, and that's really more of a mixing technique or trick. So I'm actually gonna use the jam that we just made. So it came out really cool, it sounds awesome, but one thing I noticed is, well, for one thing, the hi-hat's a little too loud for my taste, but secondly, the bass is just a little bit off time. So we're actually gonna use stem separation to fix the bass, lower the hi-hats, and then just kind of mix it a little bit better. I think we can actually get some sidechain compression, and that's one of the biggest flaws or weaknesses of using the SP404. There's no real sidechain, but with the stem separation, I can add sidechain in the post. Now, the sidechain is gonna be affected by the full drums, not just the kick, but I mean, that's still better than nothing. So here's the stem split and I did multiple takes of the jam so I cut the part that was relevant and then I fixed the quantize and I'll show you what it's like without it really quickly. And if we sell it with the drums. So you can see I want the bass to hit closer to the kick which is right here. So I'm just gonna do a 16th note quantize. You'll see it's not perfect but that's okay. I don't want it to be perfect. I want that groove but I want it to be a little bit closer so let's hear it now. And I also put some side chain on the kick. So without the side chain, let's hear what that sounds like. So I actually set up a uh, side chain compression just using the stock compressor. I have it doing a lot of dB reduction. There we go. And then let's just tone down the drum highs a little bit because there's a lot of high in there. I'm just taking down the high end a little bit. So that's the update. What do you think about it? Does it have a place in your workflow? Let me know in the comments. So yeah, there is kind of a big catch with this update since a lot of it is locked behind the M series chips or at least perform best on the M series chips. So if you're considering an upgrade to one of these computers, check out this video next to see my thoughts on the M2 MacBook Pro that I bought. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.